Hey Hoppa, how's it going? Sam here from Punk Gaming, and today I'm doing some NHL. Last time I did FIFA, but I actually handed that over to Yank, and he'll be doing FIFA from now on. So I'm going to be going behind the scenes in NHL and show you guys how to build a team up from basically nothing and into a dynasty. So it's going to be a 10-season NHL GM career, and I'll be using the Edmonton Oilers for the first, I believe, three seasons. It gives you a three-season contract. You can see how I have all of my settings lined up so you guys can play on the same setting. I adjusted the GM length to about 10 seasons, so it'll be a 10-part series. And if you want to see another one after that, then I will do another one with another team, maybe how to build a team from a medium rank into a dynasty instead of starting from scratch. So first thing you want to do is go and view your lines. So these are my current lines right here on the NHL roster. I got some good players in Taylor Hall, Nugent Hopkins, Smith, Gagne, Eberle, and Hemsky is pretty good as well. And on defense, Ray, um, it's not Ray Whitney, but uh, Nick Schultz and Whitney are pretty good, as well as Smid. And then in goal, I have Nikolai Heavy Bolin and Devin Dubnik, who are not the best, but they will do for now. I'm going to upgrade those as the series progresses. And then in the, NA the AHL, I'm sorry. The only people that are really useful are Magnus Pajarvi and Linus Omark. Those are the only two that will be brought up throughout the uh, year. The rest of the people are kind of, I guess you could call them injury reserve, even though they technically are not. And in goal, there's no one particularly useful. So after that, I decided to go and look through the free agent market, and I decided to pick up a goaltender to replace uh, Nikolai Happy Bowen, so I signed Pascal Leclerc for, I believe, a two- or three-season contract just to be a backup goaltender, and yes, it was two seasons. So now the owner wants me to uh, get 35 wins, which is not too unreasonable. It's a pretty easy task for a team that is starting from nothing, and throughout the preseason, I did relatively well. I actually picked up this trade for Happy Bowen after I signed Leclerc for a third round pick this year and next year. I thought that was pretty good for someone I'm not going to use anymore. And this is going to go into some detail here. This is your trading block. It's much more in depth than in past years. You can specify what stats you want to be good. So here I was trying to get a second line forward to fill in for Alice Hemsky, who was injured at the beginning of the season. And so I decided I wanted someone that was signed for three to eight years, probably someone that's going to be very beneficial to the team that has a high overall 85 or above, which isn't too unreasonable for a second line forward, a pretty good wrist shot, which is something that I need. And then this is the guy under the owner who wants me to just do well. And here's the salary cap in case you're interested. The only mark that really matters is the 70.2 million. That's what I have to say under. And so this is the roster going into the season. I decided to put Hall, Nugent Hopkins, and Eberle on the top line, followed by Smith, Gagne, and Hemsky. And then I brought Pajarvi up from the AHL on to the third line. And then the fourth line is just my tough guys. And then on defense, it's basically what you saw before, except I believe I switched Potter and Peckham, or maybe it was Petri and Peckham. And the rest of that stays the same, as well as in goal. The only difference is that... Nikolai Habby Bolin has been switched out for um, Pascal Leclerc now. So you can see that as well as the shootout lineup. Alice Hemsky, Jordan Arbery, Taylor Hall. Those are the top guys. Those are the guys that are pretty much going to stay there barring injuries because injuries are a very, very big deal with this. And the one thing that you guys are not going to be seeing in this episode is all of my um, my roster moves. And the roster moves are very annoying um, before I get to that, though, I did make this trade. This is a rather big trade, actually. I traded for Tim Erickson, so I traded the third-round pick that I picked up from Buffalo, as well as my second-round pick and an AHL prospect for Tim Erickson, who is a huge defensive prospect. And then I made another trade with a fourth-round pick and Smid for Dougie Hamilton, who is an offensive prospect. Both of these guys are very, very good. And I say offense, Dougie Hamilton's defense. So yeah, both defensive prospects. My apologies. So this is uh, middle of December. I'm ninth in the uh, Western Conference, which is very, very good. Much better than I expected. A just sub-500 record. 
way better than I expect to be doing, and it uh, pretty much goes on downhill from here fast. And it's kind of what I expected, but not too bad. And something I forgot to do early on was to go to the staff upgrades. This is a huge deal. There's four things, the amateur and pro scout, the medical staff, and the assistant coach. So the one you can pretty much ignore is the assistant coach. It's a waste of your points. Don't bother with it. The amateur scout is good for draft rankings and such. Um, pro scout is trades and players that are moving. He'll be better at that. And then the medical staff obviously will help you to either not get injured, your, your players won't get injured, or to recover faster, which is very, very important because injuries are a huge part of this game. If you have a lot of top, player injured, top players injured, sorry, you're not going to do well. Simple as that. And so I upgraded my medical staff to do well. And we only had one player make the all-star team, and it was Alice Hemsky. I believe he was on the third line on right wing. Yes. Yeah, he's the only one that made it. And this is the post-All-Star break team. Uh, it's not doing too well. A lot of injuries because my uh, staff upgrades were not done at the beginning of the season. I actually did them way, way later. But before I continue, the one thing I did not do was I didn't show any of the roster moves. And I'll go into that more in-depth in the next video because building a roster and putting players in the right spot is very, very difficult. So I'll try and explain the basis behind that in maybe one or two minutes and get through it fairly quickly and not take up a ton of time. So I actually got this trade for Ryan Smith and I was like, this is kind of ridiculous. I want to show it to you guys. A second and a third round pick for the uh, the leading scorer, I believe, on my team. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely the, he was the leading scorer at the point of this trade. And I was like, you can't expect me to actually make that trade. And then... I will be showing who I picked up on waivers. So I picked up Brett Lebda. He's going to be playing defense in the minors. I didn't bring him up at all throughout the season. And then this is just for the trade deadline. So you want to simulate to the day before so you can set everything up. And here what I did is I looked at the bottom teams. So I looked at South Florida, New Jersey, Tampa, and then I believe Columbus and Dallas in the Western Conference were the two teams that were below me in the West. Yes, it was. And then the three in the East and my theory is you want to try and pick up those kind of players and with that kind of, or not those players, but those, you want to trade with those teams, get their draft picks because those are going to be the ones that are going to be worth more come the draft. So that was my theory behind this, as well as I made a trade for Eric Bellinger, who's 35, isn't going to be very useful on my team for a second round pick in this upcoming draft, which to me, I think getting a prospect is much more important than having an old player. And then I picked up Anton Strawman off of waivers. He will probably be making the NHL roster next season. I picked him up at a point that was very, very late in the season, and there was no point in messing up the chemistry I had. But come the 2013-2014 season, he will probably be making the roster. And this is the last week of April, actually. I went on a nice win streak here. I believe, I believe I beat, who was that? Was that Anaheim? Anaheim, and then I beat Phoenix, and then I beat um, Vancouver. I cannot tell logos, I'm sorry. Preview is tiny. And that actually got me to my 35 wins, which is perfect because I met the low end of the requirement from the management and will be able to keep my contract through next season and hopefully do much, much better. And I did lose to Calgary in the final game of the season, which kind of sucks that I did go on that um, losing game at the end. So here's the management telling me I did what I was supposed to do, but I didn't totally meet expectations. But they want me to do better next year, and they'll be expecting more, which obviously makes sense if you do. The bare minimum, they're going to be expecting more. Makes perfect sense, and I expect expect to be doing much, much better come the draft and stuff. So here you can see the Buffalo Sabres and the Chicago Wolves are the Stanley Cup and Calder Cup champions, respectively, in case you guys were wondering. Definitely was not going to be my team because we sucked it pretty badly. We were bottom of the NHL. I'm 
a 35, 41, and 4 record isn't terrible. And that was the salary cap for next season. They'll remind me later on. But my scout tells me those are some prospects to try and look for in the draft, which, speaking of the draft, will be in the next episode. And I'll go more into draft strategies there, as well as free agent strategies. So if you guys want to learn some some specifics about this let me know down in the comment section what you want to learn, as well as maybe give me some feedback on what to improve on. So with that being said, my name is Sam, and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out, Hoppet.